Hey, church family. Hope y'all are having a good day. Uh, I wanted to talk to you a little more about Pentecost. We addressed a little bit of it Sunday regarding uh, the first Shavuot, which is the Feast of Weeks, which is 50 days after Passover. So Jewish tradition says that the first Shavuot was when Moses received the law from God on the mountain. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, uh, the people of Israel were building a golden calf and making sacrifices to it. Uh, so God gave the Torah, uh, or what we call, the Gentiles call the law, to Moses and wrote those commandments with his finger on the tablets and Moses carried them back down the mountain to the people got angry and broke the tablets God made another set of tablets for him wrote with his finger on the tablets long story short Moses spent time with God on the mountain he had the law of God written on the stone tablets and the glory of God was all over his face like it was so he was so shiny that the people were afraid of Moses they didn't know what to do with him so he put a veil on his face when he spoke with them because the the literal glory of God lit him up moving forward thousands of years actually one more thing that day when Moses came down the mountain he said who was on the Lord's side 3,000 people were killed on the on the time when on the first Shavuot because of their sin and their unwillingness to wait on the Lord and moving forward with their own offerings and sacrifices to a golden calf which that's a side note the enemy's always going to have a substitute for the authentic so we'll talk about that another time uh, so that was in Exodus 32, Exodus 33. Moses asked the Lord to show him his glory. And they have this great conversation. You should read it. Uh, Acts chapter 2, moving forward thousands of years. Pentecost is still being celebrated every 50 days after Passover. And we have three feasts that kind of group together. We have Passover, we have Pentecost, which is the Feast of Weeks, and then the third feast after that is the Feast of Tabernacles. And they're so beautiful the way they tie together with the Messiah. Jesus comes in John chapter 1. The Bible says Jesus came as the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. So we now have a Word walking among the people his name is Yeshua HaMashiach the Jesus the Messiah and he's preaching the gospel bringing forth a new covenant and in Acts chapter 2 after he has become the Passover lamb and sacrificed himself on the cross he's gone up into glory into heaven he now we have the feast of weeks which is also Pentecost which is also called the feast of harvest. Some people call it the first fruits harvest. So all of the able-bodied Jewish men would come to Jerusalem to offer sacrifice, to bring their first fruits uh, offerings to the to the temple, and to uh, work through the feast of weeks. Well, that is when the Holy Spirit returned. On the, in the upper room. That's when the fire fell. What the church calls Pentecost. The Jews have always called it Shavuot. Or the Feast of Weeks. These feasts are the feast unto the Lord. They're for everyone to celebrate. Not just the Jews. And so Jesus has gone into, the, into glory. And as he promised the disciples when they said, Hey, what, what's going to happen? He said, If I don't go... I won't be able to send the Holy Spirit. 
And so now the word that was made flesh and dwelt among us returns to heaven. But he sends back down from heaven, from the actual Zion, back to earth, the Holy Spirit with cloven tongues of fire. And he baptizes the disciples. And now Peter gets up and preaches and 3,000 people get saved and touched. And the gospel begins to go forth into all the world, to the Gentiles and to the Jews. Hallelujah. So now we have the feast. We have the Passover. We have the Feast of Weeks. And now we have the Feast of Tabernacles, where the Bible says that where God said, I will tabernacle with you. And so when Moses would go outside the camp and set up the tabernacle, he would go into the tabernacle and the cloud of God would come down and hover over the tabernacle at the front of the, And everyone in Israel would get go to the front of their tent and worship the Lord. But the glory would settle on the tabernacle. And God promised that he would tabernacle with Moses and with those people. But now he has determined to tabernacle with us in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. And so in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, um, we find it's called the ministers of the new covenant. And it, it, it literally talks about all of these things. It's, and it says, are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Or do we need some, as some do letters of recommendations to you or from you? You yourselves are our letter of recommendation written on our hearts to be known and read by all. And you sh and you show that you are a letter from Christ delivered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Remember in Jeremiah chapter 31, I believe it's verse 3, it's either 3 or verse 33, God told Israel that he was going to write the law or what the Jews call the instructions on their hearts and on their spirits. And now we see the living God writing not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts, not just to the Jews, but also to the Gentiles. Such is the confidence in verse 4. Such is the confidence that we have through Christ towards God. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything as coming from us, but our sufficiency is from God. Our sufficiency is from God, who has made us sufficient to be ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter. The, and the letter, when it, the Bible says the letter, it's referring to the law or the letter of the law. We've often familiar with that but of the spirit for the and this is verse six verse five it says for the letter kills but the spirit gives life now if the ministry of death which is the the law the torah carved in letters on stone came with such glory remember moses came off the mountain with the the letters on the stone and his face was shiny with glory and it says, if it came with such glory that the Israelites could not gaze at Moses' face because of its glory, which was being brought to an end, will not the ministry of the Spirit have even more glory? For if there was glory in the ministry of condemnation, remember the law brings condemnation, it points out that we're not good enough, that we can't measure up. If the law brings condemnation, the ministry of righteousness must far exceed in its, it in glory. Indeed, in this case, once what once had glory has come to have no glory at all because of the glory that surpasses it. The Holy Spirit's glory surpasses all the other glory. For what was being brought to an end came with glory much more will what is permanent have glory. Since we have such a hope, we are very bold, not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end. But their minds were hardened. For to this day, 
when they read the old covenant, which is the Torah, the Tanakh, the, what we call the law, but their minds were hardened to this day when they read the old covenant, that same veil remains unlifted because only through Christ it is taken away. Only through the Messiah. Yes, to this day, when Moses is read, notice it didn't say the law is read. It says when Moses is read, a veil lies over their hearts. So when Moses is synonymous with Torah, with, with the instructions, they do not receive the glory of the Messiah. Verse 17, now the Lord, excuse me, verse 16, but when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Yes, hallelujah. Verse 18, and we all with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree to of glory to another. This comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. So, hallelujah, we have the Holy Spirit who has been written, who is writing the Word on our hearts. Who is the Word? It's not the written Word. It's the, the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, who is the, the living Word, who lives in us, is writing the law, his law of love, his new covenant on our hearts and on our lives and changing us into his image. So we have this wonderful picture of Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks, where the law was given and it 3,000 people died. Moses comes down with a limited version of glory over his face to, to keep people from being afraid. And now we have the Holy Spirit who has come down and is inside of us, writing the law of love on our hearts, leading us in love, leading us into the perfect will of the Father. So today we have much to rejoice over. He is tabernacling inside of us. We, don't want, we no longer have to go to a temple that's made from man's hands. We, we are the tabernacle that he comes in and lives with us and tabernacles with us. And it's up to us to unveil and reveal the glory of God to all the earth, to the nations, to show the original people of God, the Jews, what the glory looks like. Because now he's turned to the Gentiles also. And it's up to us to provoke them to jealousy through their own feasts. So what, the more we understand about the Feast of the Lord and how it operates and how it's a foretelling of the Messiah and the living Word and the Holy Spirit that's riding on our hearts, the more we can provoke those blessed Jews to come into faith of the true Messiah. I hope this blesses you today. I hope you'll turn your hearts to revealing the glory of God. Much of the church today is like the congregation of Israel. They don't want to see the glory. They want to be entertained. They want to be, uh, they want to have their intellect tantalized. They want to just sit there for an hour or two and they don't want to see any miracles. They don't want to see any glory. They just want to get in and get out. And it's up to us, the living church, the alive church, to take off the mask and show the glory in Jesus' name. Pray you have a blessed afternoon.